yeah we're live i think yeah so welcome you all um what is going to start uh with the presentation and then i'll follow up and exactly. clarify some other stuff as well okay so just to be really clear most of you will not have to go through some of the stuff that uh i'm going to explain i'm going to explain what i have to explain because some of you may have um, decided to join some Portuguese subjects that are normal for the rest of the students that are in the, in the graduation classes or even on post classes. So um, the reason why we're doing this presentation is to clarify both accounts. Most of you will be in the um, categories that Pedro will describe, but we think it's important for you guys to realize uh, what the evaluation is like for the other students as well. And for those of you who are um, in those subjects, uh, preparing those subjects. So just a quick presentation. Um, we decided to do this mostly because we also did a, another, um, another clarification. Uh, well, one of these <laughs> meetings, but for the other students, for the Portuguese students, and a lot of questions always come up because it's very confusing to understand. Uh, what we have in our university in the Faculdade de Direito de Lisboa or the University of Law of the University of Lisbon. Uh, it's important to understand that we have a regulation in practice that is very, some of you may know other people are going to other law schools here in Portugal. Uh, the one that we have at our university is very distinct, distinctive for the other ones. So if any of you have any questions or want to contact me or Pedro about it, we will always be here to clarify. If any of you want to uh, realize where we're speaking from or what uh, the, these terms are, where they they are, they're in the uh, well in some laws, some regulations that are put in practice ever since 2017, and you can always go and check in uh, our website, which is uh, ifl.pt, which is over there, uh, and the some of the stipulations that I'll I'll say that are being put in practice are in a document that is uh, clarified as element which is regulation in Portuguese anyways for the uh, the normal the not the normal students for the students that uh, that came into the to the um, university from Portugal the normal those students that frequent uh, the classes the mundane classes some of you may be attending classes like commercial law or contract public contract law uh, there are two methods in cause. We have the continuous evaluation uh, method and the final evaluation method. For most students, you will join these methods by uh, an inscription method that is in our platform, in the Phoenix platform. But you guys don't have to do that. Uh, so I will always make the quick notification that if you want to be in one of either of these two methods, you should always contact your teacher. You should always tell them, uh, ask them what kind of evaluation you will be doing at said subject. And if you want to join one of these two methods previously or prior, you should always tell them um, that you would like to join. But I will uh, make it clear what are the most important moments and what both of these consist of. So the continuous evaluation method, as you may have understood, there are two kinds of class. There are uh, one kind of classes for Erasmus students, which is a theoretical practical class. For the students in the the main course, there are two kind of classes. So we have those theoretical and practical classes, but they are distant. We have theoretical classes separate from practical classes. Both of these classes have uh, more or less 50 minutes. At this time, where we have uh, one and one hour and 40 minute classes that basically they incorporate both of these classes that you have twice a week. So we normally have classes four times a week and uh, we have one day off as a result and they are separate from both theoretical and practical classes. Mo practical classes right now are being uh, held via Zoom, just like this meeting. And most theoretical classes are also being held via Zoom, but most of them also are using another platform called uh educast for evaluation in practical classes normally people don't uh, participate in our theoretical classes unlike theoretical practical classes we leave that for the practical classes people mostly intervene in the class by solving practical cases that the the teacher can 
uh, sent via email. Sometimes we even have written reports that we have to present in front of our classmates or presentations. And that generally uh, class, uh, classifies for 50% of our grade. The other 50% for this evaluation method is normally a test that's a written test that is realized in December. Uh, to be approved in these classes, you will have to have a grade of 12 or higher. And the grade is determined by the criteria uh, of the teacher for the set subject. Uh, pretty much what I wanna, this last line, uh, some classes, which are the most that you are, will be attending are called optative classes. So these are not like the main subject that we have, uh, like commercial law, criminal law. There are other classes that may be graded a little bit uh, lower. For example, an optative class that I currently attend and I have a colleague that's not here, but she's an Erasmus student, uh, is attending is contra uh, public contract law and uh, Portuguese law. It has an approval grade of 10. It follows all of these methods, but instead of a 12, you only need a 10. So some examples for our students happen when, for example, you have a 12 in your written grade and you also have a 12 in a written test grade. This, in this case, there's no doubt the student will approve at said subject. But a good part of our university has is that you can always approve at the subject previously. So for example, if you have a work grade in class of 10, uh, but you have a great, uh, oh, it should be written there, written test grade, sorry. But if you have a great written test grade, like a 14 or something, you will have an estimate of 12. So it will balance out uh, and you will uh, be approved with a 12, just like the other student. So most of the times in our university, you end up being uh, rewarded for having works in classes. Uh, so both students are very good at speaking and students are very good at writing can be benefited both ways. Also, you can, uh, we have the practice uh, thing that I have over there, which is what happens if you, get, if you get a grade below 12, or is it what happens when you're graded below 12 by a teacher? Well, most of the times what happens is that you will continue to have this, uh, uh, in this uh, continuous evaluation method. But what actually happens is that you will have to go and do another practice test, or is it, you have to do another exam. Uh, in this exam, you no longer have to get a 12, you just have to get a 10. So imagine if you go to an exam and you got a 10 in the, the continuous evaluation method uh, previously in December, and you have to go into an exam in January. If you have a 10, uh, you will only need to get a 10 or higher to approve. You have to have a double positive, another positive grade. Or as you have the case over there of a student that gets a 12, that student will be approved. The student that gets a 10 will be approved as well. Uh, and it would always balance out. Or is it the uh, student get, that gets a 10 uh, in December and goes and gets graded at 12 in January will finish with a grade of 11 and will be approved in said subject. But if a student proceeds with a 10 and gets graded a nine, that student, even though he has a 10, which is a positive grade, did not get graded uh, positively in both tests and is subject to another test per prior. If you get a between an eight and a nine, you can always consult your teacher to, which uh, can happen. Uh, you can consult your teacher to remain in this evaluation method, or is it, you can uh, say that you wanna remain, you don't wanna almost like let go of all of your work that you've had to this way, but you still need to get a positive test. So this is a very, this was uh, put in the regulation of practice for those students who have a lot of exams to do and are not so sure if they can uh, approve at said subject. So what happens in this case is that you still have to have a positive. So even if you have a nine and you go into this test and you get a 10, you will still need to do another test or previously to approve, which are called the speaking tests. But we'll get into that very soon. I just wanna uh, clarify what happens if you get the worst of worst grades? What happens if you get like a six or five or something like that? Uh, well, in this case, you will be automatically terminated in the, uh, the continuous evaluation method, you will follow up for the final evaluation method, which is the one I want to clarify uh, after this one. So imagine a student gets uh, graded a seven. This student will Im immediately switch method. Uh, in this case, most of the times the teacher handles this for you. For, uh, for the students that are in the graduation classes, like me and Pedro, most of the time we have to go over there and uh, uh, say that we want to do the exam ourselves. For you guys, what happens is that normally you talk to your teacher to be 
to know when the exam is going to take place. And this gets handled for you in either way. But in either case, me and Pedro always say that you should talk to your teachers. So just to clarify and to make sure that you are will also be attending this test. It, it always happens, you will, but it's always nice to have a, a little heads up from the teacher. So for example, if you get credit in seven, which no one wants, you will have a, a zero and you will have to do another test, which is in January once again, but that test will count as your final grade. You will not have any other prior test. So imagine if you get a 12 for that test, you will be graded 12, that's it. So the final evaluation method. This is the method that when we discussed will be the one that most of you, when you attend the Portuguese classes, will be wanting to have, because it's the one that, let's be honest, has less work. Uh, you don't need to be practicing. You don't need to attend classes. You don't need to go to the periodical classes or the practice classes. You don't need to uh, prepare presentations or prepare cases. You just need to attend an exam that normally is in January and get graded 12 or higher. Or is it, this is the, the method that demands most work, but it's almost an all or nothing. So if you don't get a 12, you won't approve. But if you do get a 12, you will be attending this method uh, in a way that demands less work and you can focus on other subjects and in your intensive courses. Uh, so just to put some practices, imagine if you get a 13. Normally for other students that go into a, a, with like proceed with a 10, uh, this 13 would uh, balance out of that 10 and you would be graded at 12. This method, which can be seen as uh, more um, beneficial, you will just be graded at 13. Or is it if you go into the exam, you have a zero, you go in over 13, final grade 13. If you grade, get graded between eight and 11, normally uh, in, in most universities don't do this. In our case, you will be proceeding to a speaking exam. The speaking exam, is not like the other evaluations. You don't need to get a 12. You only need to get a 10. So in the speaking exam, you will always be benefited to get the highest grade possible. Imagine if you go with an eight, you add an eight, and you go to the speaking exam. And you, you get graded a great grade, get a 13, 14, 15, can happen. Uh, as a result, you will be approved, and you will be graded that grade. Imagine you proceed with an eight, you get a 13, you'll be getting a 13. You get a 15, you'll get that 15. But it also benefits you in the other way. Imagine if you proceed with a 10 from the other uh, kind of evaluation, final method. You will not have approved at the subject. But imagine if you get a 9. Supposedly, previously, you would not approve and you would have to continue. You have to do a final test. But in this case, it balances out. So that 10 and a 9, it will come out as a 9 and a half. And that will be your final grade. You will approve with a 10. And you will be approved at that subject. Uh, the same will succeed, for example, with an 11. Uh, if you get marked as a seven, um, well, well, sorry, this will succeed. Imagine if you get a graded 11 and you go and get a seven. If that, um, that the, the average that that does is not a positive one, you'll be graded a nine. You won't be graded a 10, which is the least that you, the least you need to have in this case is a nine and a half. With an 11 and a seven, you will be graded nine. So you will not have enough to approve at that chair. Uh, as a result, you will have to go and get uh, a final exam. Final exam is called in Portuguese called the course. Uh, it happens for both, uh, for both students who cannot attend for some reason the January exam or the student that does not get approved in the speaking exam. Speaking exams mostly consi consist of just, it's a quick evaluation. The teacher normally lasts between 15 and 30 minutes. The teacher asks you a few questions, you answer back. And as a result, the teacher will determine whether or not you showed enough knowledge to approve at set class. In the final exam, it's the same as the other written exam. Just written exam, the teacher, he uh, stipulates some questions and well, you answer those questions. In the final exam, just like in the speaking exam, you only need a 10. So, Imagine if you had a seven, you had terrible grade so far, or five, four, whatever. If you have a 14, you'll be get it, you'll get that 14. If you get a 10, you'll get that 10. Doesn't matter. In the final exam, all that matters is that you have a positive grade. The minimal grade that you can have is a nine and a half. So anything below nine and a half, which equals a 10, will not approve at said subject. As a result, um, 
you can get graded any grade that is a positive grade and that will be your final grade. If you attend that exam with a, I don't know, you attended, you had the other exam, you got like a six, you think I'm terrible, I will never approve. And for some miracle, whoa, I got a, a 16, something like that. You'll get a 16 as your final grade. Uh, this is almost like we call this as uh, the rescue. It's like the last rescue you can have, the last exam you can do, but it also benefits you because if you get a very good grade, you'll be, you won't be, um, what do you call it? You won't be uh, penalized for having to attend this exam. So as a final note, I just want to say that this is, can seem very complicated. What uh, Peter will say uh, after me speaking is that you should always talk to your teacher about what's the method in practice. Most teachers, even in these uh, classes, like commercial law classes or any other cl class will adapt to Erasmus students. And for those that will not, they will always explain what grades you need to get and what uh, presenta presentations or any of the things you need to do, written exams, that will always be clarified. And any doubt you have, you can always talk to Pedro. Pedro will talk to me. You, uh, you always have our contacts. We're always here to help. Now I'm um, past the ball. All right, so I'm next. And yeah, the first thing, well, you can, yeah. Um, the first thing is that you have two types of courses. You have Portuguese and English courses. The English ones are specifically for Erasmus students, and they are a mix of practical and theoretical classes, while the Portuguese ones have separated practical and theoretical classes. Um, and, the and you can have Portuguese students in your Portuguese courses, but your, your situation will probably be different. So, um, so um, yeah, you, you should, as, as what was saying, always talk to, you, to the teachers. This is the most, well, this is the most important thing you should, if you want to take away some, uh, one thing only for this presentation is talk to your teachers, uh, preferably, preferably in the beginning, uh, to know which evaluation method they want to go with. It can be your work, it can be a final exam, it can be, well, it can be a lot of stuff. Um, if it is an exam and if you want to, if you need to have an exam, you don't need to sign up for the exam on Phoenix. I'm going to go to what's Phoenix later on, but you don't need to, and you actually can't, you don't have that ability. You just, again, talk to the teacher via email or in class person to person. Uh, you talk to your teacher and you ask and you ask them to do the exam and they will uh, count with you, uh, count you in uh, for the exam. So that's how you should do. So some tips uh, to help you survive. Um, well, one, teachers take a long time releasing the grades. So if, yeah, if it, if it is taking a long time to get your grades, don't panic. It's, well, it shouldn't be, but it's, yeah, it's quite common, unfortunately. Um, second, as you can, as you probably know, physical classes will probably start uh, after Easter. So uh, we'll see. We don't all, we don't yet have the information from the information from the university of how it's going to be. Uh, but but the Erasmus office, Andrea, wanted me to just clarify that uh, and make and clarify that the the Erasmus office will tell you the number of the the. Well, the classes numbers, the physical places numbers, and where you're going to have classes uh, soon. So you don't need to worry about that. And also, you can do the whole mobility online if you want. Um, and also, if you talk to the teachers, even if if the, if you you're supposed to be physical, having physical classes, if you talk to them, that that's probably going to have they'll they'll probably give you some space if you want to skip and do online. But that's on the case-to-case -case basis. But the most important thing is the Erasmus office will tell you the classes uh, numbers and what's going well, how it's going to be soon. Uh, again, this is important as well. Phoenix is not; it's different from e-learning. There are two different things. Phoenix is you you need to sign in in Phoenix, and it's mandatory. And it's just, it's just the academic system from the university for the university of the university. While e-learning or Moodle. Uh, it's a way to access study materials. You just uh, sign in on a course and, and then you get access to videos, uh, work, papers, whatever the teacher uh, wants you to, to, to check and to see. And that's just 
e-learning is just for study material. It's important, but it's not mandatory. And it's, yeah, it's just a way for you to get the information you need. Um, a lot of you are probably going to have uh, intensive courses as well. And uh, this is also some, the, some useful information. The intensive courses will continue to be online, all of them. They will. Uh, you can only uh, skip classes once on the intensive courses. But if, for instance, let me like, for example, if uh, you have another uh, regular classes, you know, a regular class that coincides with the um, intensive course, you can send an email to, to the Erasmus office and they will send you a, a justification so you can, well, basically skip the, the, the intensive course and without any reper repercussions, uh, despite the fact of not being there. Um, also, and this is also important for some of you that may not be used to how the university uh, works. In terms of grades, the intensive course is also, they all go only from zero to 17 in practice. You can't get higher than 17. That's that's a thing of the university. Like a 17 is equal to a 20 because they won't give you 10, 20. It's something to, they think they that by giving out 20s, they will, well, it won't be as hard and it will lower the, the, the academic status of the university. I don't know what's the, the good logic behind it, but that's the truth. So for instance, if you get a 17 on the intensive courses, well, congratulations, that's as high as it goes. Um, and well, I think this is, it's yeah, it's quite short, but I think this is the, the most, the, the, the important stuff that I wanted to, tr to get to you. And now you want, you can have some questions time. And if, if by any chance me or Duart can't answer you, I will do something. I'll do a list of the questions and I will transmit them to the Erasmus office. So go ahead if you want to. Me and Duart are more than welcome. Well, we're more than um, all right to answer whatever questions we you, you may have. Um, I have a question. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, yes. yes okay, perfect. Um, I was looking on the e-learning platform to find the dates of the exams, mm -hmm. um, but I saw something, it was a bit confusing. It says like, it's gonna close on this day, like 1st of June and 12th of June. Uh, are these the dates of the exams? No, these are, those are the dates in between you may have the exams. That's like the estimate. Because uh, what normally happens is that we have to decide an order for the exams. Yes. And uh, that order hasn't been, no one's pronounced themselves about the order. We're probably going to do, uh, I was, I'm in charge of that. We're probably going to do the order more or less in the next 15 days. So okay. when, when we realize what exams will be going on first, second, then you'll have the, the, the dates for set exams. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And um, also another question. Uh, we usually, uh, well, this, the professor will probably um, talk about it, but are we usually allowed to bring the treaties and law materials uh, annotated? Yes, like always. Look. <laughs> I have them all over there. <laughs> so yeah. <does> Pedro. <laughs> okay. You can always bring them. They, uh, there's a practice. Some people in our university are really afraid that they may look into them, you know, just to check, mm -hmm. you don't have any any stuff that should be there. But normally that doesn't happen. But you can bring whatever the whatever have whatever uh, materials are necessary for that class. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So yeah, yeah. If I don't think anyone has any more questions, uh, so we we, we did good, Dwart, because there was okay. only one people, one person asking questions. I have a I have a question. I have a question regarding the uh, English courses, like courses in English only. Um, I know that the rule of uh, passing them and the evaluation are presented by the professors and they were uh, in my classes at least. Uh, but I wonder if also the grade is the same as in the Portuguese courses. So it is from zero to, to 20 or is it some something else? Uh, could you? Maybe. No, it's, the it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. They, they are all from zero to 20. In practice, they are from zero, zero to 17. That's basically mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>